Yeah, for sure. And as uh, functional health practitioners, I mean, one of the key things we look at first is the health of the microbiome. So the microbiome is just so critical for, for, you know, your inflammation control, for absorbing nutrients, for your immune function in general. In fact, we know 80% of your immune system really lies in the microbiome, really throughout your body, not just in your gut, but all the mucous membranes. And so what are some things that we can look at? Like, what are some signs that people may have dysbiosis or an imbalance in their microbiome? Yeah, great word, dysbiosis. So things that are growing in amounts that they shouldn't be growing, maybe there'd be normal flora in the beginning, but they see opportunities to grow and proliferate. And then they, then they can cause pathogenesis or sickness, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things I get concerned about is like, when you and I breathe in oxygen, well, when everybody, just not just you and I, but anybody breathes in oxygen, we do breathe out a waste product. And these bugs that start to have these opportunities to set up housekeeping and grow and proliferate, they have cellular respiration as well. So they have these end products that can be what? Very inflammatory to that permeability to our gut lining. And that gut lining is so important because one of the things that I think listeners should understand, and this always blows me away, is that our gut, right? The hole that starts here and ends back there, one cell thick, right? How many, we've got multiple layers of the of dermis, the skin, our liver is packed full of hepatocytes, those specialized liver cells. Um, we can find deep layers of, of cells and, and other organs, but that so important digestive tube, one cell thick. And what it has is these little tight junctions and they're tight because they're only gonna allow what is needed to get in the bloodstream and then in the cell through. Everything else gets packaged up hopefully with our fiber, water pulled back, and we eliminate it through mm -hmm. our detoxification processes, right? So defecation, urination, respiration, perspiration, all that stuff. If the inflammation is there, maybe from these endotoxins, from an imbalance in gut flora, then these, these get inflamed and they swell and they actually get bigger. This allows other, maybe just fine things like food, food particles, right? But too soon into the bloodstream, the mm -hmm. immune system goes, hey, you're not supposed to be there. It mounts a reaction, which is another inflammatory you know, reaction in nature. And we get off and running with a myriad of issues. And people can experience so many clinical signs like headaches, skin disruptions, digestive disturbances. And because of the, I would say, gut brain access, depression, anxiety, other things like ADHD, it's all connected. And that microbiome is so super important to stay balanced and keep those tight junctions as tight as possible. So only the good stuff can get through. Yeah, that's so important. And and I'm glad that you highlighted how it's only one cell wall. See, our, our body, our ancestors really face a lot of times of nutrient scarcity. And so the way that we were designed was to, to optimize nutrient assimilation. That's why it's only one cell. But in our day today, we have access to so much food and, you know, our ancestors really weren't eating as much. So they had a lot more time for their gut to, to rest and heal less just overall, um, you know, metabolic stress on it. And now today, I mean, obviously we're eating all the time, even though we're eating a lot of nutrient less food, we it's. You know, we're getting plenty of food in our system, but we're also putting so much stress on the gut and the guts really wasn't designed to handle that amount of stress. And we have that gut mucosa that really protects that, that lining and how, how critical is that gut mucosa and, and what, what kind of things should we do to help support the gut mucosa and the strength and the, uh, the resilience of the gut lining? That's a great question. It's a great point. And, you know, you bring up like <clears throat> the number one modality in the research for healthy living and longevity, the number one, right? There's a lot out there now. We can, we, we have a lot of tools in our toolbox is caloric restriction. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it's a wonder that it hasn't swiftered the nation. You know, everybody wants this longevity, but do you really want to implement mm -hmm. that number one modality that's going to get you there? No, that has been my experience clinically. Um, but I think you said it, a allow that digestive system to act as it was sort of meant to act back in the day and rest. Yeah. And I think this is where, and a lot of these things these days have these buzzwords, right? So intermittent fasting we hear, and we've got a lot of hype around it, but to be honest with you, it's not really intermittent fasting. And I think we get 
I think we get, um, it's, it's back to just eating as we should, right? Yeah. With that rest period in there. So that digestive processes that take a lot of work, right? And a lot of enzymes and a lot of building blocks and such to then rest and allow it to repair. That is so super important. Folks that eat up like right until they go to bed and then they go to sleep mm. or try to go to sleep, I would say. And that food is just sitting there and the digestive system is like, what am I supposed to do now? They just shut off most of their brain power. And how can I work without that? And it just gets into a big conundrum. So you know, there are other things that we can do to repair gut mucosal um, if it needs to be uh, sort of recovered in a sense. Um, deglycerized licorice is wonderful mm. for that. It's yeah. something that you chew on. So it, it's, uh, it takes the, the, the acid part out of the, the glycerinic acid and it's deglycerized, but when you chew on it and swallow it, it can increase that mucin which is so important to protect that gut lining because of our stomach acid, right? You and I said yeah. one cell thick. If we are some stomach acid is important, that helps break down those big proteins, but it's so toxic, not caustic, I should say, one drop on your hand, burn mm. a hole right through it. So we need to protect it. And that's where that mucin I think is so important. Those yeah, so critical. Yeah. yeah, so critical. We got the mucin there, the mucus lining real thick in our stomach to protect the stomach from that sharp acid. And then kind of the immune component where our secretory IgA lives in that small intestinal region to help kill off pathogens and things like that. And we've got to have that good roller coaster of, um, you know, it's it's like a domino. It's like good stomach acid production helps reduce pathogens, helps optimize nutrient absorption, and also helps stimulate bile production. If we don't produce enough stomach acid, we don't get the right stimulus to produce enough bile because bile is an alkaline substance to bring to basically take away the acid in the small intestine. And it's also uh, antimicrobial, helps emulsify fats. And then when we get that at, that acidic bolus coming out of the stomach, it also helps trigger the production of um, sodium bicarbonate as well as uh, pancreatic enzymes. So we kind of get this nice influx, but most people are just eating so quickly and on the go and you know, like you talked about just eating so often throughout the day that they're depleting or they're not, they're inhibiting their body's ability to produce enough stomach acid. Yeah, you're right. And, and you know, you kicked off a point in my head that um, was a sort of a hallmark of my recommendations when people would uh, leave my office and almost every single person that I talked to, one of the things that I would recommend, right? So I have a lot of education, I have a lot of experience, <laughs> but chewing, chewing was the thing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I could be a little bit of a, um, well, I don't, I don't know. I always walk my talk in this area, but this is where I always make sure that I tell my patients because that process is so important because the more that you can get that digestive process started right there, right? Um, with uh, all of those secretions coming out, then the, the better your microbiome, your digestive process will be down, downstream. And so chewing is extremely important. And I just think it's something that we've forgotten to do.